As always, thank you for tuning in to Weapons Education. I just got back from SHOT Show 2012 and I thought I would put this video out there to answer a lot of the questions that are already coming in. Uh, what I'm going to do, I got about 60, 50, 60 videos coming your way. So I wanted to discuss the trip and uh, what it took to get some of the uh, interviews that I did get. It was, it, was, uh, it, was a, it was a blast. Let me tell you, first of all, it was held at the Venetian, as you know, which is huge. I mean, huge. Uh, it's three floors. I spent um, eight hours a day. I probably walked three to four miles a day, and I only seen about 50% of the whole entire show. I never even made it to the bottom floor, which was all law enforcement stuff. I just, I physically, I didn't have the time. I flew in Monday, and I spent all Tuesday, and I spent all Wednesday making videos from the second the doors opened to the second the doors closed at 5.30 at night. And um, for some of the videos took two hours uh, to come to fruition. For instance, uh, probably the kindest person I met there at SHOT Show was Les Bear. So I, I realize now I should have done like a two-minute intro sitting here explaining to you what it took to make that interview happen with, with Les Bear himself. It didn't just like happen. Um, so I'll tell you right now, by the way, he's got to be the, probably the nicest man I met in all of SHOT Show 2012. And by the way, us as consumers, um, what I'm going to tell you prior to each video being uploaded is how friendly were they towards me who, this, this, this is what I would do. I would go up to the booth and I would say, um, I want to promote your company. And I had the whole spiel down. It's going to go on the internet and it's just trying to get publicity for your company, whoever it might be, Smith & Wesson Glock, and in this case it was Les Bear, and uh, he's a very busy man of course, and some of these booths are really, really huge, he had one of the larger ones, um, but he was always in meetings, or he was surrounded by a lot of people, uh, mostly business people usually, and um, I went up to him one time and I broke into one of his meetings and I said, sir, I'd, I'd like to do a video with you, he was very kind and nice. He goes, Tom, can you, can you come back in an hour? Can you come back in an hour? So now the, the, the floor is so huge. If I left his booth and then I walked, say, a half a mile, oh, I gotta go back to Les's booth. Then I gotta walk all the way back. Oh, he's still busy, he's still busy. So it took a lot to ultimately find him in a position where he can say, all right, Tom, I got, I got the time. Let's do this. And I'm really so appreciative that you're doing this. Now, like I said, if we're gonna give our hard-earned money to some of these companies, I learned a lot about a lot of the companies. Most of them were really friendly and went out of their way to get the right people for me to make the video happen. Smith & Wesson was really, really friendly, but I'll discuss each one of those as, as the videos roll out. Uh, Les Bear was, of course, awesome. Finally got the interview with him. Um, Wayne LaPierre, NRA, uh, as we know, you've seen that video already. I should have preempted it and explained to you how did I make that video come to fruition. It didn't, it didn't just happen. And the way that one came about, by the way, was uh, as an NRA recruiter, I knew some of the people on the floor, and that kind of helped. And so one, one gentleman named Randy, he, he helped me out to hook me up with Wayne. Um, but, you know, that took some time to get coordinated and put together. So there was a lot of effort that went into the videos. And when you watch the videos in the future, I'm going to preempt it with how friendly was, was the staff there, the company themselves, was the video hard to obtain or difficult. Um, I, I, I met uh, four megastars, I call them megastars, uh, Wayne uh, LaPierre, NRA, was, was huge, uh, Les Bear, and that was huge, and I met two other big, big uh, celebrity type people, uh, and you'll see those as surprises over the next uh, week or two. I'm going to post three to four videos per day uh, for the next few weeks until we get them all out there, and I'm going to preempt them uh, with the little story behind how the video came to fruition. Uh, a lot of people are asking me the question, can civilians go to SHOT Show 2013? What I'm going to work on doing is um, putting together, you have to go as media, it's not open to just the public, but there's ways, there's ways around it. And oh, as, you know, as we get towards January 2013, around October we'll start discussing it. If you want to go, I can get you in there as media with me, with um, with myself, weapons education and all that. So think about it if you want to go next year and we'll, we'll plan accordingly towards the end of the year. I can get you guys in. 
So that's all. That's all I wanted to say in this video is uh, I flew um, from, from Fort Lauderdale out. It was it's a long flight. It's like five, six hours. And of course, I got stuck in the middle of three seats. I mean, I'm 6'5 in those little seats and I'm jammed like this. And I had a heavier set uh, lady next to me. And she's got bare feet. She's got her bare feet sticking up on the seat in front of me like, ugh. And I had to pull on this poor old nice, like, 95-year-old lady, a little fragile lady. And here I am sitting in the middle, all crunched like this. Oh, gosh, I can't wait to land. Oh, God, I got off that plane. I had to pee so bad, but I couldn't get out because she was sleeping next to me. I couldn't. I'm too big. I didn't want to hurt the fragile senior citizen. And the heavy set lady, was, I, just, I just held it in. I just, oh, finally landed. And uh, got rid of the back pain. But as soon as I hit the floor of the Venetian that next morning, that Tuesday morning, it was pure adrenaline the whole the whole straight two days. It went by in like two hours. But uh, just really had a good time. I want to personally thank um, Anthony. Um, I'll put his link below. He's uh, Pachico. And I want to uh, thank Dino. I'll put his link below. Good guy. Uh, they helped me do a lot of the recording. They did all the recording, I should say. Uh, Amador. And uh, th we're going to do a separate shout-out video. I'm going to mention four channels here over the next week who are, who are good friends of mine, uh, AZ1911 fan. All, all these type of people I'm going to mention in a special separate video or, uh, in a few days. But the bottom line is, what I wanted to say is, the videos didn't just happen. It was actually a, you know, a lot of work to get to the right person. Each booth has a designated person who is allowed to speak to the media. So you get there and there's 15 people, you got to get to that person. Well, that person's in a meeting, that person's not available, or, you know, or whatever. He's at lunch, uh, so come back, come back, come back, give us your card, we'll call you. Yeah, right. So I, I, I nailed it, though. I was on a mission. I, I was on a mission to hit them all, and I hit most of them. I hit most of the big names. I know you're all going to ask, did I get Glock, did I get Smith & Wesson? Yeah, I got Glock, I got Smith & Wesson, I got Ruger, I got Colt. Um, I got uh, Beretta, both military and civilian sides and, and things like that, but I don't want to let the cat out of the bag. Um, but I, I really worked hard for all of us to make these videos happen, and I want to thank you all for being so kind and nice towards me. It's what keeps me driven, it's what motivates me to do what I just did to go out there, and uh, it was just incredible. I met Fate of Destiny there, as you know, and um, met some cool people there, got some surprises coming out. Uh, the one, one person, I'm just going to say this now, and I'll leave you with this, who is not a nice person, and I'm just going to say it because it's the truth, Mr. Ed Brown, and it shocked me. And when the, when the video goes up for Ed Brown, it's short, it's only like a minute, maybe 90 seconds, and after I had a 10-minute conversation with him, which I was extremely disappointed, and I'll discuss his personality uh, when I put the, Ed, the short Ed Brown clip up here this week, compared to... Let's bear just the opposite. The man was so appreciative, as you can see right at the end of the video. He goes, hey, thanks, man. I mean, he was just really appreciative. Uh, whereas Mr. Ed Brown was the complete opposite. He wasn't. And we'll discuss that when that video comes out. But as a whole, everyone was really nice. I'm going to start doing some intros and videos now and start uploading. Thank you so much. Please tell a friend. Checking out for now.